Hello and welcome to part five of the building tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be working on continuing with our UI. So what we're going to do is we're going to have um, our buttons spawning the different base parts over here, depending on which of these buttons that we click, it'll be dynamic. We'll spawn in the right amount of buttons for the right amount of parts that we know about. And then this will allow us to click on a button and choose that part to then place down in the world. So let's just head straight over to the code. Um, I'm in building panel UI.cs and there's a couple more variables we're going to need here. So first off, let's get a um, public building data array. This can be uh, known building parts. We also want to get a public building part UI uh, variable. We can just call this the building um, button prefab let's call it that and let's just jump back over to unity so now on our build panel we've got our known building parts and our building button prefab which we created in the last part of this video series so we'll just drag that in here and for the known building parts we can lock this panel go over to the building data um Folder that we have and I'm going to select all of these and then drag them over to known building parts so that that fills that array. So now I'm going to make two um, public functions. I'm going to say public void and we can say populate um, buttons and we'll say public void clear button. Then we need a couple more methods. So we want public void um, on click all parts and do public void on click room part and the final one public void on click corridor part and we're going to get our populate buttons here and what I'll do is I'm going to pass in a part type for this um, chosen part type then from then from here I'm going to call our populate buttons function and for all parts um, we'll come back to this in a second because obviously for all parts we're not choosing a part type we are um, we want all of the parts so we're going to spin this we'll have two versions of this method um, on click room parts we can say populate buttons we can pass in um, part type room and paste that for corridor parts to corridor so let's just make another version of this function. So public void populate buttons. And this one won't take in um, any arguments. So in click all parts, we're going to call this version of our method. And all the other ones, we can call this version and pass in the chosen part type. So let's now just jump back over into Unity. And on our build panel, underneath side panel top, we have these buttons. So I'm going to come over here and we can get the on click method here and we can drag in the build panel script and we can choose um, building panel UI and we can say on click all parts for the rooms button. Drag in the build panel. Choose room parts and on and on the corridor button. Drag in build panel, building panel UI, and corridor parts. Now, as we click these buttons, we're going to do something over on this right hand side. So we need to get a reference to this item window, which has the grid layout group on it here. And we can say public game object item window. Jump back over to Unity. Let's just make sure we assign that. Drag in our item window. So we'll start with this uh, method first, the chosen part type method. So in here, what we want to do is we want to we want to include uh, using system dot link, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a new variable, and we'll say we'll call this um, room part. I'm going to set this equal to our known building parts, and then using link we can say where we open up some brackets, and we can say P for part, we say P, which is our building data, where P dot uh, part type equals our chosen part type. Then we can call to 
array like this. So now we've got a building data array of everything that is a room, if we're passing in room, or um, or corridor, if we're passing in corridor. And really, we should call this um, just like building. Now, if we make another function called public void spawn buttons, and this is just going to take in a building data array, and we can say, uh, I'll just call this button data and call that from our populate button. So we say spawn buttons and we'll pass in our building pieces. And from this one, which is all pieces, we can say uh, populate buttons and we can just pass in our known building parts, which is also an array of data. So we'll do the actual um, spawning of the buttons here. So we can say for each, and we'll leave this as uh, var, we can say for each um, data in button data, then we are going to instantiate our building part UI. We're going to instantiate our building button prefab. And for the transform, we're going to say uh, item window dot transform. And I'm going to store this button that we've instantiated in a new variable. So we'll say var spawned uh, button is equal to this button that we are instantiating. So now let's go over to the building part UI script, which is on our button. So you can see that we've got this init function, which takes in a piece of assigned data and a parent display panel. So back on our building panel UI, all we need to do here is a spawned button instantiate, and then we can say spawned button dot init, pass in the data that we're currently on in our loop, and then we can pass in this as the parent display. And then but before we spawn in button, we want to clear the buttons that were there previously. But the way we're going to clear the buttons is we want to do a for each loop and we're going to loop through all of the children that are um, attached to our item. So we're just going to say for each. And we can say for each button in our um, item window dot transform. Dot cast to transform. We're casting, we're making sure that we're getting the transforms of all of our item windows children. And we're just going to call destroy item, uh, sorry, button dot game object. But this should in theory be working so let's jump over to unity and let's see what bugs are going to present themselves okay so every time we click back in our mouse is getting captured so on our ui manager we're going to make a function do a private void um set mouse cursor state which will take in a bool and we'll just call that new state. And I'm going to call set mouse cursor state based on whether the build panel is open or not. We'll pass in. Um, so obviously we're setting the active in hierarchy variable here when we set it to active. So that'll be its new state. So we can pass that in um, to our set mouse cursor state. So here we can just call cursor dot visible is equal to the new state and let's call um set mouse state here as well let's try that to see if that's fixed okay so that's showing the cursor we now need to unlock cursor so in new state we can say cursor we can say cursor lock mode dot um then we want to say um, cursor dot lock mode uh, lock state sorry is equal to cursor lock mode. Say so cursor dot lock state is equal to, and then we're going to check this new state uh, ball that we're passing in. So if it's true and the cursor is visible, we want to say uh, cursor lock mode dot confined, which will just confine it to the game window. 
And if it was false, then we want to lock it, which locks it to the center of the game window. So let's jump back to Unity. Try that, so we'll press play. And we can go over here and we can now click our buttons. And you can see that these change depending on which uh, items are in place. Uh, one thing, you can see the word button is over our image. Uh, we can just fix that. So let's open up our building part UI. And then um, we can just delete the text from the button. Go back over to our scene and we click this. And open this up, choose all parts. So now all of our parts are there. And if we click on a piece, nothing happens. But we can fix that. So one thing we want to do is when we open up the window for the first time, we want to make sure all parts is selected, otherwise it looks a bit weird to have to click a button first. So let's fix that issue first. So what we can do is say, uh, we'll say if the build panel is now visible, let's call build panel dot populate button and we won't pass in anything so that will just populate it with the all parts button, which will spawn in buttons um, now let's go over to our building part UI and here in um, our init function we can copy this out of the awake and now when we initialize it it will get the button and it should add our on button click to our parent display uh, and actually, we need to put that down below because obviously we're setting the parent display here and then are adding the listener to it. Let's try this out. So we'll go back over to Unity and hit play and press tab. But now there is a, another issue. Let's see what that's going to. Okay, so here we're trying to get the image component before we've got the button. So let's get the button and then assign the on to that. Again, let's press tab so we've got all of our building pieces we can select them for some reason they aren't spawning in the world for us to place and that would be because we're not actually listening out for that event so you can see here in that so in our build panel ui script we've got on click we are calling on part chosen dot invoke and passing through some chosen data but what we need to do now is on our build tool, we need to listen out for this. So we can say build tool, and then in our um, on enable function, so we'll do on enable, and we can say building panel UI dot on part chosen, which is that event that we've made. Then we can subscribe our choose part method here to that. And then if we just copy and paste this, we'll change it to on disable and we can unsubscribe from that event. We'll go back to Unity and let that recompile. Hit play. So we're here, we press tab to open up our menu. You can see we're still moving around in the background. That's fine. Uh, we choose a building piece, press tab to come out of our menu. And we can now place that down in the world. You can see that if we um, rotate that to be at this like 45 degree angle, place one down. Let's go back into the menu and see if this works. So we can press to get a square building. And we've now got that in the world. And you can see that it's remembered the last rotation. So that's where that comes to play. And we can snap that down into the world. Uh, one thing now is we don't have a way to clear um, our selected object. We'd want to be able to press, say, escape and clear the object, which I will uh, implement in just a second. But you can see we can go in here into our buildings. We can now enter them. Uh, so let's just do that little bit of cleanup. So on our build tool in update, let's check for the escape key. So if we have a spawned building and um, keyboard dot current dot escape key was pressed this frame let's make a method called um, delete object 
preview. I'm going to make this method. It's going to be private void. And we just want to, we can copy and paste this bit of code here. Well, actually, we can cut and paste it from our choose part method. So we can cut that, paste it down here in delete object preview. And then let's call delete object preview here, where we've just copied and pasted that code from. And now when we press the escape key in our update function, back here, we are deleting our object preview. So again, hopefully for the last time, let's jump back over to Unity and hit play. So we can press tab, we've got all of our parts here, we can just go for our corridor pieces and click for this corridor piece. We can place it down into the world. And if we decide, oh, actually, no, we don't want to place that. We want to do something else. We can press escape. That gets deleted from the world. We can tab and we can actually put down this room that we wanted to. Place that down in the world, press escape. And then we think, oh, wait, no, actually, what we prefer is uh, we want to delete that from the world. We can press Q. Okay, so I've been having, I've been having a bit of a bug. Um, there was two things. So in our building.cs uh, file, in the update material function, we can just put a renderer equals null check here, and we can just return. So if we haven't found the renderer, let's just return. It's better than filling up the log with errors. And the other issue seems to come from, you can see that if I choose to place down a part, place it out there, get rid of it, press escape. We can now see that if we click this, the layer becomes set. And for some reason, a lot of these parts don't have their layer set. And I think this has come from the fact that I copied and pasted these into my project. You probably might not have this issue, but if I select all of our uh, assets, and I'm just gonna choose the building layer and we'll click yes change the children as well that should hopefully fix up the issue that i was having so if i press tab again go for this long building and place it down into the world pop over to delete mode and there you go you can see that that's working intended um, so again you probably wouldn't have had that as long as all of your layers uh, were set correctly um, Again, because I imported them from my other test project, that was causing uh, a little bit of an issue. So you can see that now we can delete objects from the world. We can come back over here and we can place some corridors down, escape, and then, you know, we can run over here and we can jump inside, look out from our new base. But sadly, when we stop playing, they disappear from the world and there's no way to bring them back. So you lose kind of all of your hard work. So that's why in the next um, video, we are going to work on saving and loading our created bases so we can bring them back into the world. So that's going to be the next video. That video will probably be the last video in this series, unless any other extra stuff comes up that people seem to want to see. That video is already up now over on patreon.com forward slash danpos if you want to get it. And you can also get all of the project files for this series so far over there as well. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I'd just like to take a minute to thank my amazing patrons without whom I would not be able to do these kind of long form sort of series. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have John Smart and Trey Briggs and all of the wonderful 4,000 XP tier members are on screen now. Thanks again for your support.